The Archivo General de Palacio, the Spanish Royal Archives kept at the Royal Palace of Madrid, was created in 1814 to bring together, classify and preserve the documents produced by the various offices in charge of the administration of the royal household and estate of the Spanish crown. Today, the archives is state-owned and open to the general public. The archives is managed by Patrimonio Nacional, National Heritage, the government body that supervises state-owned property given over to the use of the king and the royal family. The nature and content of the archive's holdings make it both a central and an intermediate archive, insofar as it receives document transfers from both the royal household and national heritage. It is also a historic archive. Its oldest items date back to the 12th century. The palace archive houses more than 12 linear kilometers of textual documents. Over 80,000 photographs, some 11,500 plans, maps and drawings, 1,600 diplomas and posters, and 1,500 parchments. It also manages the archives of the royal boards of trustees in various monasteries and convents. The archive's holdings include many documents related to the First World War. As head of state, the king engaged in intense diplomatic efforts that led to the biggest humanitarian assistance operation of the period. From 1917, the Spanish Embassy in Berlin was responsible for protecting the interests of French, Belgium, Russian, Serbian, Portuguese, Romanian, Japanese and American citizens. From there, more than 3,000 inspection visits were carried out on prisoner of war camps to check up on their compliance with the international conventions. The delegates monitored their situation, capacity, hygiene and health services, food, religious services, labor, recreation and disciplinary system. They also took note of prisoners' complaints and recorded everything in detailed reports. The Spanish Embassy in Paris was entrusted with protecting the interests of Bulgarian citizens and subjects of the Ottoman Empire. It arranged the sending of money and correspondence, issued passports and transit letters, and passed on news. The photographic collection consists of more than 5,400 photos from the main European photography agencies. There are over 3,100 images from the German Photography and Film Office and a series by Jean-Baptiste Tournasud, director of the French Army's Photography Division. The archive also houses more than 100 plans of prisoner of war camps, maps showing the evolution of the war and German propaganda posters. The office of Alfonso XIII's private secretary handled the king's diplomatic and personal correspondence. This included the documents of what was known as the European War Office. First letters requesting Alfonso XIII to intercede in repatriating people from enemy territory or asking for news arrived in August 1914. More and more letters were sent to Alfonso XIII after the French daily newspaper La Petite Gironde published a press release on June 19, 1915. 
Soon, the huge volume of similar requests led to the creation of an office specifically concerned with handling these cases, the Oficina de la Guerra Europea, Office for the European War. More than 180,000 requests for help came in from people in all walks of life, ranging from the working classes to the aristocracy, but all sharing the same concern, to find a loved one who had been missing to them. Some of the applicants were famous, as were a few of the people inquired about. Examples include the Russian ballet dancer Václav Nijinsky, the Italian composer Giacomo Puccini, the Polish-American pianist Arthur Rubinstein, the French painter Jean-Paul Laurence, the English writer Rudyard Kipling, the Belgian historians Henri Pirenne and Paul Frédéric, the French performer Maurice Chevalier, and the future statesman Charles de Gaulle. The thousands of letters that were received made it necessary to establish a procedure. As a result, the letters were processed and answered more speedily. The procedure began when the post arrived at the palace. The letters were opened and registered with a file number. The most important information was underlined, the person's name and regiment, and the date and place they went missing. They were then classified and distributed to the various departments. Letters were received from all five continents and were written in different languages, mainly French but also English, Italian, Portuguese, German, Russian, Hungarian, Dutch and Spanish. Three different types of record cards were filled out, depending on the department dealing with the case. The Department of Wounded and Prisoners of War handles searches for missing soldiers and news of prisoners of war. It also sent books, clothing and provisions, arranged pardons, and improved the conditions at prison camps. Colors were used to identify the country the request came from. The Department of Information in Occupied Countries focused on the civilian population. It received news of relatives, sent money and documents, and arranged pardons and repatriations. The record cards it used were pink. The Department of Repatriation and Exchange of Prisoners used blue record cards. The cards had two parts. The upper part contained details of the person inquired about and the asker, and a record of the steps taken. These sections were kept in the office and were the main component of its archive. The lower sections were sent to the Spanish Embassy for it to carry out the inquiries. They were later forwarded to the Royal Palace with the results and stored in the related file. Replies were sent to all the requests received. For this purpose, Forms were designed in various languages and for different types of news. The office handled a total of 182,529 cases between 1915 and 1921. Richard Sumner Gamble, UK. Sidney G. Gamble, a London fireman, wrote to Alfonso XIII in December 1915 to inquire about the whereabouts of his son, Lieutenant Richard Sumner Gamble. Richard had gone missing in the Battle of Ferme de Bois in Pas de Calais, France, on the 9th of May the 21st, 1915. His father mentioned having met the king some years back at the fire brigade headquarters. To help with the search, he enclosed two maps of Ferme de Bois, the place where Richard went missing. Richard was 33 years old, 5 foot 10 tall, dark skinned, and not very heavily built. A distinctive feature was a tattoo on his arm displaying a Viking in armor with a spear. The result was not found. File on Marcel Dauphresne de la Chevalerie, Urbain Merlin, Roger and Dominique Edouard Vangian, France. Madame Dauphresne de la Chevalerie wrote to Alfonso XIII in April 1916, inquiring about the whereabouts of her son Marcel, who had gone missing at Vaux during the Battle of Verdun. 
She also asked about two nephews, Urbain Merlin and Roger, who went missing the same day as her son. In addition, she requested information about Dominique Edouard Vangian, of whom there had been no news since February 1915, when he went missing during the Battle of Eparge. She wrote, I would be very grateful if you could inform me about these four boys, who are very dear to me. In the end, only Aubin Merlin was located. He was being held in the prisoner of war camp at Celle, Lower Saxony, Germany. Madame Dauphrez sent a photograph to make sure it was her nephew. Very pale blue eyes, dark skin, three broken teeth on the front left side. File on the Gabriel Arnold family, Belgium. Jacques Gabriel's family lived in Liège. He worked for the artillery detachment in Le Havre, manufacturing ammunition for the Allies, and requested news of his wife and son. He also asked the King of Spain to arrange for them to be repatriated to France or England, along with his sister-in-law, who lived in olois sur viron Repatriation was not possible, as they were Belgian citizens, but they were all found to be in good health. During the conflict, and especially after the armistice was signed in November 1918, Alfonso XIII's wartime humanitarian work was widely acknowledged, for example during various trips to France, Belgium and Italy. The fund of the Office for the European War has been fully described and digitized and can be consulted online at https colon forward slash forward slash archivos.patrimonionacional.es.